<laughs> Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to some more Let's Play Hollow Knight. In the last episode, we made it out of Deep Nest. We died for the first time as well. We saved Cloth from being pinned down there in uh, Kingdom's Edge or somewhere close to Deep Nest, where a bunch of where she was hiding from a bunch of insects. We discovered several new locations, but decided not to explore them and or could not make progress in them yet due to our lack of some other abilities of some sort. We made it back to the City of Tears, unlocked King Station, and then arrived back here in Dirtmouth and the Crossroads, where we spent a bunch of the cash that we had. We also unlocked a new area down below the City of Tears, the ancient water, uh, waterways or something of the sort, which we'll need to explore later. We might get to some of that in this episode, but first, we're going to see about exploring some of the stuff that we left behind. Uh, we'll grab the long nail. All right, we have our compass, gathering swarm, fragile greed, and long nail currently equipped. We'll take this opportunity to do a little bit of farming and kill creatures that we come across as well. There will be some amount of farming if you decide you want to unlock everything in this game. Most of the stuff that you'll want to spend Geo on does not require too much work to get, and you'll probably be able to afford all of it in a casual run. Some of it, though, will not be easily acquired. And in fact, will require a good amount of farming creatures if you want to purchase it. Three late-game charms. Just as a heads up, in case you decide that you like this game and want to pick it up, require a total of 36,000 Geo to purchase them. They're not required to beat the game, however. Most charms are not required to beat the game. So keep that in mind as well. It's just something that if you really want them, you'll be able to purchase them. I do not intend to actually do that much farming in the game. I don't think it will be required. I, because I don't intend to get all of those late game charms. We might get one of them, but that will be it. Oh, interesting. The hunter lost track of us. I guess they're not so good at hunting after all. creatures are doing. Maybe they moved into this area just recently, and this is their way of making a home? Or ha they tear apart rocks bit by bit and eat it? Or this is some sort of mating ritual that they perform? Oh! Or maybe the infection has spread to them as well, and we just can't tell because we can't slash them. And this is just what they do. The infection seems to operate as some sort of... It's, it reminds me of the uh, T-Virus from the Resident Evil series, or something of the sort, where creatures that are infected do not attack other infected creatures. Ooh! Oops, and of course I waste soul. Oh, alright, so we picked up an item. Let's go ahead and remove the marker from the map. So we'll go back to the area where we fought the false knight. I've marked that area as having a jump in it. I also want to visit some of the people that we visited before and see if they say anything different to us. So we'll stop by the snail shaman and see if he has anything new to say. There is an area in his... 
temple? Abode? Which we couldn't reach last time, but I don't think we can reach it this time either. Glen on in, Mayor. <laughs> oh, I'm sensing a new power about you. One that'll crack the rock beneath us. A useful thing for one looking to travel ever deeper. My third uncle used to possess similar abilities. He also possessed a ferocious temper. <laughs> what a dreadful combination. what these are in the background either. They look like Geo, but much larger versions of it, unless it's some sort of petrified fossils. I can't do it. I can't bring myself to kill them. It's probably required for the Hunter's Journal if you want to unlock everything. But I can't do it, at least not yet. They might just respawn, but some creatures do not respawn when you kill them, even if they're a boss. And I just don't have the heart to kill them as they mourn their fallen brother. We did, however, search up there. I mentioned spikes last episode, and these spikes also concern me somewhat. Is this a normal rock formation of some sort? It could be! I've seen some incredible rock formations. Some sort of, like, um... Ah, not... I don't think it's obsidian. Some sort of, like, hex... Uh, hex-shaped rocks that grow in strange formations. It looks surreal when you see it. I'll have to see if I can remember to link to what I'm talking about down below. Have to use a joystick here. Maybe this is similar? And that it just so happens to grow this way? Oh, some of these things look like faces in the rock. Like the hollow nest bugs. But petrified and larger. And someone's been here as well. We've got one of their statue. And more light. Oops. 
everywhere. Did you see the postules on it? I suppose I should mention now, everyone, that I don't know where all the secrets are in this game, and I apologize if I miss anything. I haven't looked online because I don't want to any, any of this to be ruined. Everything that I'm showing has been stuff that I have found during my other times playing through this game. Ah, oh, this is very nice. The family's growing quite large now. <laughs> Grub song, a charm. Thank you. While we have a good amount of money, why don't we double back to Dirtmouth while we're here, and we'll go ahead and spend some of this. Then we'll head back down into the green path, and look for some areas that I've left behind. Oh! We should also do this. You might be able to faintly hear it. The tinging sound of a secret. Let's make sure that I'm good with my charms, and I think so. We should probably read about a few of the charms that I have. 
Uh, later. We'll do that later. Oh, notice Breta is blushing, considering that we are right near her. Patamas, Jill! Oh, he has another mask shard here, and the simple key... We can afford only one of those two things. Let's purchase... Let's purchase the key? And we'll purchase these as well. Let's purchase Stalwart Shell. Life in Hollow Nest can be tough, always taking hits and getting knocked around. This charm grants you more time to recover after taking damage. Useful if you need to escape from a tight spot. You are invulnerable for longer while this charm is equipped, after taking a hit. It will not protect you if you take a hit and then fall into spikes. That will be an instant two hits and you are put back to the closest platform. I found this under the counter. Some creature must have laid it here while I was stuck down in the ruins. I suppose you could buy it. I won't miss its sour odor. So he's charging 500 for the other mask shard. Ooh. Okay, with this other key, we can open this simple lock that we saw down here earlier, or we can hold on to it for something else later on. I think we'll spend it here. A stone door with a simple lock. Use a simple key. Really? Welcome, small intruder. I've been sound asleep in here for some time. Some... time? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Well, now you've gone and woken me up. It's no matter, I suppose. I might even be able to help you. I am Gigi, and if you've found your way into my chamber, you must need my help. You see, sometimes we leave our regrets behind in the world, like black stains. If we don't deal with these regrets, hope starts to drain from us. Do you have regrets of your own, little one? Let me peer into you for a moment. Ah, uh, you don't appear to have any lingering regrets. How lucky for you. You don't need the services of one such as I. Oh, ah, darling. You seem to be free of regret. You don't need the services of one such as I. Farewell. When you die, if you're worried that you cannot get to your corpse because it's in a location that you think you'll die obviously trying to reach, or you think it's in a boss room and you can't defeat the boss and get your and defeat your soul, you can come here, pay GG one rotten egg, and he will summon your soul to you in this room. You can then kill it here and retrieve all the Geo that you had lost, or, if you didn't have any Geo, get your soul restored to full. Or both, obviously. Okay. I think we're gonna head down to the green path next. I also think that that icon can be removed.
there are several items we have now that we did not have before. We have the wall jump, which we were lacking earlier. We also have downward dive. And we also have... What was it? Something else as well, which I can't remember. Oh, our light source. Those will come in handy, as there are several places now that we can search, which we couldn't before. We also do more damage, which would hopefully help this area become a bit easier for us this time around. I do feel guilty killing the mask, um, the mask ravens, whatever they're called, since they're peaceful, but they respawn, so I won't get that, I won't feel that guilty about it. I've been thinking about some of the lore we've been picking up a bit in this area, too. We read that the children of Un stepped out of the dream and into this world. I do not think that it's talking about the same insects that live in Hollow Nest. We also read that those who leave the White King's Road must follow the law of Un. I suspect that there were actually multiple groups of bugs here. Maybe the bugs that lived in this area, these strange creatures that we're killing, uh, these things, might have been quite different from the bugs that were in Hollow Nest. It looks like they still were not spared the infection which which uh, covered this the world here. Ooh, that was close, Tim. But I think that maybe they must have had an agreement with the White King. Or alternatively, they may have been all, all been together. But the bugs here look very different than the bugs we've seen elsewhere. They look more wild. Um, for lack of anything more descriptive, they have these giant beards. want to go down. Um, do you want to go down that way, Tim? No, you want to go this way. We will try to read some more journal entries at the end of this episode. was one of the lore entries there. I want to actually read it. Those who stray from the White King's roads shall face the law of Un. I guess it doesn't really tell us either way. Un might be separate from the White King. Oh, it is, obviously. But I'm not sure if it's like, um... It'd be like saying those who leave the human's road will face the laws of God. I can't tell if Un was worshipped by all the bugs in Hollow Nest, or if it was a separate entity. Maybe the bugs of Hollow Nest worshipped the White King himself. Okay, we're gonna try to head south to reach the temple where we didn't have any light earlier.
a face carved from stone. The lack of any music in that area, combined with the echoes and that these statues, makes that area seem like it was not used for any good purpose. I hear a slight tinging sound somewhere. Sure of it. It's off to the right somewhere. Hmm. We could explore some areas of Fog Canyon that we couldn't explore earlier. Let's give that a try while we're here. there was a cocoon here, so while we're in the area, we might as well grab it.
Looks like that's all the progress we can make in this area. Another spell will be useful, though. Probably asked this earlier, but do you guys think the acid was always here? Or was this area pure before? I guess the other creatures might be immune to the acid though. Now last time, I don't think we fully explored this area. Yes, we stopped here. Once our lands, a pale being lays claim to the caverns ahead. It may appear benevolent, but it does not share our dream. Be wary to wander that place. Well, we can't get up there yet. Something different, like poison? I can see plants living within it. Or maybe it's just acidic to certain creatures? Should we go next? Hmm. There's something up here. Let's double back then all the way through Green Path to reach that place. Yeah. 
This was tra just traveled before by someone, since the statues are within this area. Tinging from here, there's something secret. Another one of these strange trees. We're finding them everywhere. It's like the fifth one we've seen so far. Too great. We cannot go any further that way.
Higher beings, these words are for you alone. These blasted plains stretch never-ending. There is no world beyond. Those foolish enough to traverse this void must pay the toll and relinquish the precious mind this kingdom grants. The corpse of a large bug. Strange mask this one's wearing. And the chamber of some sort. Hmm. We don't have whatever it, it requires to interact with at this moment, so we'll just remember this and come back later. Enjoying the bracing air? We're quite close to Hollow Nest's borders and those desolate plains that surround it. In this direction, I'm about as far as I'm willing to go, though it's been a pleasant change from the tight confines of the caverns. I've drawn on a small map for the area. It's a simple one and more for completion, really. Not knowing the full extents of a region can be quite frustrating. <laughs> I chanced upon a strange bug atop these cliffs. His house isn't far from here. A very imposing figure he was, and no doubt lethal with a nail. I suspect you two might share more in common than him and I. <laughs> see the cocoon flowers, so there must be one here somewhere.
Mm -hmm. Ah, well met. Yes, I thought I could sense the aura of a fierce warrior approaching. I'm impressed you found my sanctuary here at the top of the world. No doubt you've endured many trials and overcome many foes in your quest to find me. No, don't speak a word. I, Nailmaster Mato, who was first taught the art of the nail by the great nail sage himself, hereby accept you as my pupil. Let us begin the lesson immediately. Hell is Your form, exquisite. Now I know how many, how my whole own master felt when he passed down his teachings to us. I hope you don't think I'm too forward when I say that I consider you to be my child. Yes. When I saw you perform my nail art, I felt a bond between us suddenly flash into existence. You honor me beyond words, my pupil. Thank you. Bam. Finnel. Bam. Finnel. Thank you. Here lies Gorb, the Great Mind.
we are back where we started from. Some things to consider. Now that we are back at the start, I can mention them. We started out that way. And we destroyed these closed gates. So we must have been the only bug to travel to Dirtmouth in this direction since this area was sealed. I suppose the bugs who've arrived in Dirtmouth as adventurers must have come through a, a different route. Either they flew here, I suppose, or they came from the... from the east. By, via a passage that we have not yet discovered. Or, something seals the entrance again after it is open, but it is still open for us at this moment. No one's mentioned how this was sealed. So I suspect we are indeed the first bug to enter this area in quite some time from this direction. Just something I've noticed. I found another of these. If you look closely, there's some nice engraving work on them. I suspect I undercharged last time, and this is the only one left. It's gonna cost you. Echo boss. Huh? Still looking for something to buy? Is your Geo weighing you down? Unfortunately, you seem to have cleared out everything I'd be willing to part with. Nothing left at all. I think there might be a few old trinkets down in my storeroom, but I lost the key a while ago. So no more business between us, I'm afraid. For now, at least. Get out of here and let me spend some quality time with all the geo you've gifted me. Akala, Entono. Faring well in your adventures below? Well, I had an adventure of my own while you were gone. I don't usually visit the town's graveyard, but I thought I'd go and visit the grave of an old friend. As I was walking amongst the tombstones, I noticed a large kind of chanting coming from somewhere nearby. Extremely sinister chanting. I looked around to find the source, and I saw two bright, horrible, huge eyes staring at me from the door of a dark cave. I pretended I hadn't heard the voice or seen the eyes and scurried back to town. My friend will have to wait a little longer for her visit. He's talking about the cave of Gigi that we opened. We have enough money. We can purchase, I think, another item from... Cornifer and... I can never remember her name. I want to say Izzled, but that's not it. I keep confusing her name with the name of the girl from Dragon Age Origins. Ah, <sighs> Bapanada. So we have two charms left, and we can afford both, so we should purchase them. These markers are new additions to the shop. You can use them to mark interesting spots on your map. The material used for this color is quite rare, so it costs a little more. Those trams sound awfully 
Uh, like awfully advanced machines, those ancient bugs must have been a clever lot. These pins should be perfect for recording a tram stop's location. And we have just enough time to make it down to a tram station. And then I should probably read a few entries. Oh. Um, we'll stop here and look at the journal. So what have we read? What, what did we unlock this time? Husk Hornhead. The remains of a bug animated by a strange force. Use it its horn to attack any uninfected creature it finds. These bugs have an arrogant air about them, even after dying. Overly proud of their long horns, I enjoy snapping them off. Aspid Hunter. Bests its prey by spitting corrosive liquid, often hunt in packs. Cunning predators that will try to pick you off from a distance. Don't give them any space, just charge in and cut them down. You'll find they're not so cunning once they are dead. Tick Tick. Uses its small sharp claws to climb along walls and roofs. Spends its time tap tap tapping its way through the roads and caravans to the surface of this kingdom. If you're patient, you can wait for it to come to you and pick it off. Crawled. Timid scavenger that crawls through the caverns looking for food. Dull and pathetic. Hardly worth killing. Moss creep. Wiggling that covers itself in leaves to appear larger. Oh, wait, I think we... No, but yeah, we read about that one already. Obble. That slow flying bug frequently discharges the acidic liquid stored in its round body. Does it realize what a nuisance it is? Drifting around, spilling its noxious juices everywhere it goes? If you see any, make sure to kill them. Golka. Aggressive plant life that retracts protectively when danger is near. Spits hard spiky balls at foes when they are uh, when at a distance. Its leaves are dry and bland. The bud is unpleasantly sour, but oh, the venom in those balls it spits. Exquisite. If you have the time to spare, try drinking some and enjoy the effects. Moss Knight. Protector of the green path. Trained in the ways of the nail and the shell. They hide as bush like mounds and look soft, but beware these warriors. They are relentless in combat, fiercely guarding something hidden in the green path. Uma. Smallest jelly form, passive and unaware, but pulsing with a dangerous electric charge. The spirit of a dead ancestor? The brain of a larger creature allowed to drift free? An egg searching for a safe place to spawn. I have no idea what this is. We'll have to go out of our way to kill a few creatures, it looks like. That might be all of it. Garpede. Giant burrower covered in a thick shell plate. Covered in shik... Wow, shick. Thick shell plates. Tirelessly travels the tunnels of the deep nest. Monstrously strong. They shrug off any attacks you make on their thickly armored bodies. Luckily, if you simply avoid their paths, they'll leave you alone. And judging from its eyes, it's infected. Corpse Creeper. Parasitic beast that controls the body of its host after the host's death. The beasts of this land have found plenty of ingenious hiding places, but none so clever as the body of another creature. If you happen upon such a beast, rejoice. You've hunted two creatures at once. Lesser Molek. Attacks by spitting acid and slashing with four claws. If you try to keep your distance, it will spit sticky, burning globs of vile stomach juice. Move in quickly and strike de decisively. Brooding Moloch, ferocious but extremely social creature, becomes aggressive if not able to mingle with its own kind. 
I hear this beast crying out sometimes as I prowl the caverns, although I've never actually laid eyes on it. Who or what it is, who or what is it calling for? As far as I can tell, its voice is never answered. Alright everyone, that'll do it for us. We're gonna go ahead and end at the crossroads, and we'll pick up from there in the next video. So thank you all for watching. And I hope to see you all in the next one. Take care, everyone.